Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the Stark Side. While you're here, I do appreciate it if you support the channel by hitting that like button. And if you're new here, please hit that subscribe as well as a notification bell. So today we'll be talking about the Marvel Legends Spider-Man No Way Home's Green Goblin. So this is a deluxe Spider-Man No Way Home figure like with Doc Ock. So this is a bit more pricey than the other figures from Spider-Man No Way Home. But anyway, here we have Green Goblin and like the deluxe Doc Ock figure, this comes in the windowless packaging for Marvel Legends. However, unlike that figure, this packaging is based on No Way Home instead of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. So at the front here, we get the logo for Spider-Man No Way Home. At the top, we get the MCU Spider-Man logo. Then at the side, we get this digital render of the figure. And at the other side, we get some nice concept art of Green Goblin. And at the back, we don't get any bio here, but we do get another digital render of the figure as well as all the accessories that it comes with. And that's that. All right, let's get Gobby out of the packaging. Here we have Green Goblin. Now before we talk about the figure itself, let's go over the accessories. Since this is a deluxe figure, it doesn't come with any Build-A-Figure part, but it does come with a ton of accessories. So Green Goblin comes with a pumpkin bomb, a pair of goggles, a hood piece, a flight stand, an alternate Green Goblin masked head skull, and of course his Goblin Glider. So first off, looking closely at the pumpkin bomb, so this looks good. We get some tiny sculpted details all over the piece here with decent orange and green paint apps, so I do like this a lot. You do have to be really careful with this accessory because it is so small, so it's easy to lose it. Next up is his goggles, which look really nice. I do think this is more suitable for Doc Ock instead of Green Goblin, but putting it on his face is easy, just like that. We also get this hood piece here, which goes with the unmasked head skull. And this looks nice. I like the purple that we get on this piece, so nothing to complain about here. I do wish we got an unused version of the hood, like when it's just resting on his back to use for his masked head skull. I think that's something that's nice to have, but it's not that big of a deal. Next is we get this flight stand here, which is made up of translucent plastic. And I'm really glad that they gave us this. So this is something that you can use for his glider, which I'll be showing you later and how to use this. And looking closely at the alternate mask head sculpt here, this looks so iconic. It's not an exact replica of the mask that appears in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man back in 2002. This is the same character, but for No Way Home, they made the mask a bit more angular looking, if that makes sense. Anyway, this looks so fantastic. It looks so menacing. I'm loving the detail that we get here. There is a bit of marbling here at the top, but it's not really distracting, so that's good. Later in this video, we'll be switching up the unmasked Norman Osborn head sculpt with this one because I'll probably be displaying this figure with his head sculpt most of the time. And lastly, we get his Goblin Glider, which has got to be one of the biggest accessories I've ever seen. And this just looks so accurate to what we get in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man and in No Way Home. Here we have two pieces where his feet go, uh, and these are actually separate pieces. They have pegs on the bottom that go here on the glider, so that's really nice to have because it will give you an option to rotate the feet around if you want to get the pose that you want for Green Goblin. And the glider itself has a ton of details here. Uh, like in this section, we get some awesome texturing here on the wings, so that's great. It also feels very light, so that's cool. And at the bottom here, the other side, we get more details like some rockets here. I do wish they used a glossy type of plastic instead of this flat looking plastic here. I think that would have made the entire piece feel like it's made of metal, you know? Then here we have this port where you put in the flight stand. So the flight stand itself has three of these, so you can position the glider using any of these three points. And going back to the glider, so the glider here is also articulated, so you can move the wing parts like this. So this is great because it offers more possibility for Green Goblin. So just a brief history about this version of Green Goblin. So this is the same version that appeared in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man in 2002. But it's not entirely clear which point during that film he was taken from his universe to the MCU. And his outfit here is based on his appearance in No Way Home right after he kills Marisa Tomei's Aunt May. 
And while I love his suit in Sam Raimi's movies, I think the MCU improved upon it by giving him this purple hoodie and this satchel here, which is very reminiscent of his classic outfit from the comics. Personally, it wasn't even after seeing the film that I realized that the MCU gave him his classic outfit. And looking at the figure itself, so starting with a head sculpt, I think this looks awesome. I think it captures the likeness of Willem Dafoe, and I love the facial expression that they used for this piece here. The details look really awesome, and this just looks straight up insane Green Goblin. And putting on the masked head sculpt, and here we have a full-on classic live-action Green Goblin. And I'm definitely displaying mine like this. Just a minor gripe though, you can see a bit of neck here. It'd be nice if they gave us an alternate armored neck piece too, but I'm okay with this because I think it reinforces the idea that Green Goblin is a crazy human being in a Halloween costume. And looking at the rest of the figure, I love the level of detail that we get here. We get the purple top here, which gets shredded and ripped after he fights Spider-Man in Queens. And this purple piece is also removable, by the way, so you can see more details of the armor below it. And like I mentioned earlier, we get his satchel here, which is like his bag of tricks from the comics. So this is an awesome detail to have. And all over the figure, we get these purple areas, which are bits of the hoodie that we get in the film, which, you know, it, they get stuck after all his fights. We also get rockets here on the wrists. And on his left wrist, we get the blades that he uses to try and kill Tom's Spider-Man in the final scene of No Way Home. Anyway, the legs look fantastic too, so we get more sculpted details as well as more of the purple area, so that's consistent. I like that a lot. And I think this just might be my favorite figure of an MCU villain. Well, it's a villain from a different universe who just came to the MCU, so I guess it still counts as an MCU villain. So overall, I'm loving the sculpt and paint ups on this figure here. Now let's go over the articulation for Green Goblin. So Green Goblin can look up that far and he can look down as well. His head does rotate and we do get some nice neck pivot there. His unmasked head sculpt does the same thing, but if you put in the hood piece, it will hinder the neck articulation. His arms move upward that far above the 90 degree mark and you can bend them down all the way. His shoulders rotate 360. We get a bicep swivel, pinless double jointed elbows. His wrists do rotate and move up and down. He has a diaphragm pivot that allows him to move sideways, bend forward, backwards, and rotate side to side. His legs can kick forward very far, but not so much backwards. His hips move outward very far. He has an upper thigh cut, pinless double jointed knees. His ankles move up and down, and he has ankle pivot as well. Now for some figure comparisons, here's Green Goblin next to some other characters from Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy. So we have the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, Doc Ock, and Sandman. And it just looks so good seeing all these characters together again. And here's Green Goblin next to another MCU Spider-Man antagonist. So we have J. Jonah Jameson Jr. And if you want a civilian attire for Norman Osborn, I think this works. And here's Green Goblin next to all three Spider-Man from No Way Home. So we have the Friendly Neighborhood Spider-Man, The Amazing Spider-Man, and Tom's Spider-Man, which I'm temporarily calling the Spectacular Spider-Man. And here's Green Goblin next to all the other live-action Spider-Man villains that I have. So we have Doc Ock, Sandman, Mysterio, and Shocker. And this Shocker is actually a Hasbro basic figure that I just did a quick custom just to make it look more cinematic for the MCU. I think the only live action MCU Spider-Man villain that I don't have with me right now is the MCU Vulture. So I do hope to get my hands on that so that I can make a live action Sinister Six. So that's my review of the Marvel Legends Spider-Man No Way Home's Green Goblin. I think this figure has a great amount of accessories. I think the sculpt, paint apps, and articulation on this figure look fantastic. So I do love this figure. And if you're wondering where I got this figure, so I got this figure from Collector's Quest Philippines. So if you want to check that out, there's a link in the description below. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think of this figure. Let me know what you think of my review. Please leave a comment below. So this review actually concludes my Spider-Man No Way Home figure reviews. So if you like this video, I do appreciate it if you support the channel by hitting that like button. And if you still haven't, please hit that subscribe as well as the notification bell. You can also follow me on social media, links in the description below. And I'll see you guys in the next video.